boom, here we go. So I got uh, all carried away, setting up games, packing up games, getting frustrated with games, starting a game, finishing a game. I forgot to do a quick little uh, video overview of Arctic Storm. This game uh, is easy to find because it's underappreciated. In fact, uh, although it is a little bit expensive because I think it's probably in the 20 or $30 range and you kind of get the box and look at it all and go, yeah, is this worth it? But I think it is. And here's why. Uh, play this on Vassal. <clears throat> and uh, let me just show you a little bit of the components, right? So first of all, it's the Rus russo Finnish War, which you're all probably very familiar with because you're all such serious grognards and you're totally into it. <clears throat> and if you're not, then you should be, right? Uh, nice little black and white rule book. It's pretty straightforward. It's got turn summary on the back. I think it clocks in at a hefty, doesn't have an index with page numbers on it. That's awesome. Um, I'm talking 23 pl pages plus designer notes. Straight up easy. Um, <clears throat> some play aids. A little bit of a rata, not too much, which is really nice. And I'm just trying to get to the map real quickly. There's a little event chart that you need to use. And uh, then you've got a nice full color map of Finland. So it's the whole campaign at basically regimental, divisional scale, stuff like that. And uh, it, does, uh, it does a pretty good job. The duration, it's only a couple of months, uh, obviously enough. War didn't last that long. It runs from 11.39 through to uh, uh, April of 19.40. So a handful of months, five months or something like that. And it's got some, uh, there's, you know, as, as I'm talking about it, I'm thinking, well, there's a few quirks with it. But uh, <clears throat> all the things that are quirky are, are forgivable because of the gameplay. Now, before I, we got into playing this game, I was uh, quite reluctant to play it because everyone I'd spoken to uh, who probably hadn't played uh, said, oh, the victory conditions are broken and uh, the Soviets can win merely by not attacking. Well, that's wrong. Okay, that's not possible. Uh, my opponent played the Soviets and we had a look at it. There's, uh, there's some interesting rules that prevent that from happening. Uh, there's this <coughs> set of VPs that you start with and then the, uh, the track the track goes down over time. You lose points over time as the Soviets. If you're, uh, every turn you're gonna lose VPs if you're, it um, doesn't matter whether you're doing anything or not, you're just gonna lose a VP. And you're gonna lose a VP if you take a replacement point. You're gonna lose a VP if you, um, uh, uh, sorry, if you use replacement points. So you're, you're gonna lose, you're gonna lose points and in order to uh, regain those points, you have to capture terrain. Uh, so the, it it's a, does a really good job of pulling the whole war at the, in the larger context together. And it, they've worked out a way, given the disparate nature of the forces, to... <laughs> I just realized I've got a OCS uh, chart taped up on a picture up on my wall here that I haven't taken down yet. Uh, they've got a, a, a CRT that allows this asymmetrical <coughs> conflict to play out. It's very, very hard to kill Finnish units because they tend to be able to retreat. But it's also as the attacker, which the Soviets are 98% of the time, it's also very easy to lose a step in a combat. <coughs> And eventually you're going to see your your army start to break down over time. You're going to have to make some hard choices about how you're going to, how you're going to conduct the war. So, um, you know, the player objectives are pretty clear. Uh, you know what you're trying to achieve. You know what you're trying to do. It's got some nuanced armor rules in it. Uh, allows for the, the creaky but uh, substantial Soviet armor to uh, have its impact in the game. Uh, logistics play a part. Supply is very important. There are some, one of the quirks is that there are some uh, very powerful uh, uh, ski troops uh, and partisan style units that can be very impactful. And in one case, we saw them take out a battalion of, uh, of uh, Soviet forces, which I found a little unrealistic because we're talking about small bands of dudes. Uh, so you can imagine it's the middle of winter and they're on some, the Soviets are on some little trail somewhere and they get their asses kicked by, by a couple of 
couple of Soviet, a uh, couple of uh, Finnish guys. Uh, let's see here. What else did I like about this? I'm just looking at my little list I usually talk about here. So yeah, the CRT is interesting because it, it, it uses uh, three, uh, two dice, but sometimes one. So if you're out of supply when you conduct combat, you only use uh, one die. But if you're in supply when you use when you're uh, uh, attacking, you use two dice, and so you'll get the benefit of the higher numbers from rolling those two dice, which give you obviously give you better results. So I liked that idea too because down in the lower numbers, it hurts. It hurts. Uh, can still hurt both sides, but certainly going to be painful for the attacker, and they're going to pay a penalty for attacking while they're out of supply. So a nice, <coughs> excuse me, a nice uh, a nice mechanic there to represent something that's not um, that's not done particularly, that's not done that way in any other game that I've seen. Uh, I, quite, I quite liked it. Uh, I, I think, I'm not sure that the scripting is really heavy in this game. It doesn't, uh, it's not a heavy handed approach. There are some rules around the Mannheim line. Uh, I think it's called uh, uh, down in the south of Finland on the border with the Russians where you, you know, there's fortresses and stuff like that where there's certain types of attacks that have to happen and you're allowed to mass forces, but that costs you more in losses when you do that. Uh, some good stuff there. So it's not ra it's not history on rails. You uh, are able to uh, get off the rails relatively easily. I think we got to the point where the, you know the Finns are kind of chipped away at the Russian uh, gameplay uh, enough that they were unable to you know, really uh, effectively pursue the war much further. So we call it, a, I think, a marginal uh, Finnish victory or something like that. I wrote this up. It's on the blog. You can check it out on the bigboard.com. Uh, if you just, uh, there's a little search button there somewhere. You can pop, uh, Click that, and if you search for Arctic Storm, I'm sure you'll you'll find it. There's a full write-up. There's two or three parts there. Actually, there's only one part's been published so far, depending on when I publish this. Um, the rest will be out by the end of the month, end of February. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Replayability. That's a good question. I think uh, clearly you can get at least two plays out of it. You want to play both sides. Uh, to have the experience, because it's a very different experience. You're you're dealing with different problems uh, with but with both sides, and and I think depending on the strategies taken by the Soviets, because they're really driving the game, right? Uh, however, they choose to uh, persecute the war is going to determine what the Finnish strategy is going to be. So the Finns are in a somewhat reactive mode, ninety percent of the time. I I spent a lot of time. Looking at the board, trying to think, okay, where where can he get to next? When you've got you know a, a line of units yay long on, across ten hexes, where can he shuffle stuff to try and uh, make an make an effective attack that will be beneficial to him in terms of acquiring VPs? So there was the you know there's usually only two or three spots, and so wherever those spots were, I was always trying to rotate in <coughs> fresh units, bring out weaker units. Stick them in there somewhere. Uh, stick them down at the bottom of the stack where he couldn't see them. Hopefully, uh, not paying too much attention to what I was doing, and then try and get a leader in there because leaders can have an impact in terms of uh, column shifts and stuff like that. So that's uh, also a powerful uh, effect for the Finns. Soviets get different uh, DRMs of different column shifts that are equally powerful. I felt like the air power in this game. That's one thing I will say before I, I wrap up on uh, replayability. Felt like the air power was a little too much uh, for both sides. I, I felt like it had uh, <clears throat> certainly too much impact on the game in terms of the, the combat impact. Uh, you know, you're making some pretty significant swings with that. And, and I didn't realize the Finns had quite so much air uh, as this game perhaps represents. So they might, might need some tweaking for the history nuts. So replayability, I think, is good. I think that uh, you you could probably get two, three plays out of each side, and then you'll probably be done with it. Pretty fast playing game too, actually. Once you you are spending a little bit of time doing some counter uh, some factor counting because you you can't look at the stacks, but you can you know you know you can hazard a guess based on. Um, you know, based on the size of the stack, as the case may be. That you know, there's probably uh, at least uh, you know. I always put my weakest unit on top. 
which uh, Steve worked out fairly quickly. But then I'd always try and sneak in, you know, a two-factor defense unit in there, or if I could uh, find one, a four-factor defense unit, and then try and surprise him with uh, with um, uh, the defense wasn't the defense wasn't going to be uh, it's going to be stronger than he thought it was going to be. So that's always always a little bit of fun to do that. Um, that takes some time though, because there is some jiggling around that both sides need to do in terms of of making it happen. So, oh. We probably did, probably put 10 hours into it or 12 hours into it, like gameplay time, not, uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know, chit chat and stuff like that. So, um, rules are very straightforward, uh, very consumable. And uh, I, I, you know, I found the components to be in, in pretty top notch, uh, given its age, right? This is a game made in sometime, 92. So it's old, uh, it's ancient. Let's get warm down here. So, solid game, fun to play. I would highly encourage if you have any interest in the Finnish War. I know everybody loves Red Winter, but Red Winter is just one little hex on this on this particular game. Uh, uh, it's a it's a good overview of the Finnish War, and it's also affordable. And I think it'll give you a good a good feel for the situation. It it is clearly not, you know, there's a couple of companies out there that are making some Finnish war games right now. There are two or three that are coming out. Uh, this is not those games, but it's a good game nevertheless, and it would probably give all those a run for their money, other than one of the monster ones that's been built, and I don't know if they want to play a monster game of, uh, of this particular conflict. Um, for a whole lot of reasons, but anyway. All right, that's enough talking about Arctic Storm from GMT, another uh, solid older title from them. I encourage you to have a look at it, and I hope you enjoy the quick little overview and check out the blog for the rest of the, you know, after action report and all that stuff. Ciao.